Hello, this is Jane Goodall. First of all, I want to thank you for letting me share a few words with this important conference. We're going through pretty dark times right now, aren't we? Politically, socially, and environmentally. There are two major wars, 15 conflicts across Africa, unrest, demonstrations, and increasing violence in many countries around the world. The gap between the haves and the have-nots is increasing, as is racial and gender discrimination. And there are many governments that are becoming police states and violating human rights. Moreover, we are faced with the two main threats of climate change and loss of biodiversity. Weather patterns are changing. There are worse storms, floods, droughts, heat waves and wildfires. And it's the poorer nations and the indigenous people who are suffering the most. There are an increasing number of climate refugees, as well as those fleeing war, violence and discrimination. We're polluting air, water and land, creating mountains of waste and placing unreasonable and unsustainable demands on our planet's natural resources. Mining for oil and gas is devastating huge areas of habitat, and mining for minerals, particularly illegal minerals, is equally destructive, sometimes more so. Our reckless burning of fossil fuels, along with deforestation and the destruction of other carbon-storing ecosystems, is releasing the stored CO2 into the atmosphere to swell the greenhouse gases that blanket the globe and trap the heat of the sun. Ice and glaciers are melting. Ocean levels are rising as the water expands. Melting permafrost is releasing huge amounts of methane, a very virulent greenhouse gas. Industrial farming releases a great deal of CO2 and its use of monocultures, along with chemical pesticides, herbicides, and artificial fertilizer, is having a devastating effect on biodiversity, and it's killing the very soil on which we depend. Factory farming of animals is not only unspeakably cruel to the imprisoned individuals, each of whom, by the way, can experience frustration terror and pain, but it also takes a lot of increasingly scarce fresh water to turn vegetable to animal protein. Moreover, the animals during their digestion, particularly cattle, emit quantities of methane gas. As you all know, the loss of biodiversity is all around us, in our farmlands, cities and gardens. Everywhere plant and animal life is at risk. Indeed, the overall picture is grim. And unfortunately, while more and more people are working to protect the environment, corruption and the power of corporations and governments with vested interests in maintaining the status quo derails many of the projects that would have helped to restore health to the land. So it's hardly surprising that so many people, particularly young people, are losing hope. Some just become apathetic and do nothing. What's the point? Others become angry, sometimes violent, and others become depressed, and this can lead to clinical depression. Suicide rates are going up all around the world. As many of you know, I spent years studying chimpanzees. They're our closest living relatives, and they're like us in so many ways. The biggest difference, I believe, is the explosive development of our human intellect. Chimpanzees and other animals are way more intelligent than once was thought, but only we humans can investigate 
and begin to understand the mysteries of the solar system. So how come that we, the most intellectual species to ever walk the Earth, are destroying our only home, planet Earth? It seems, doesn't it, that there's a disconnect between our clever brains and our human hearts where, poetically, we seek love and compassion. We seem to have lost the wisdom of so many of the indigenous people who make a decision only after asking, how will this affect future generations of our people? Unfortunately, the policy of most of the major corporations and governments is to strive for short-term profit or for personal gain at the expense of protecting the environment. And of course, the same can be said for the majority of people in the industrialized world. Goodness, it's time to wake up, to understand how the idea that there can be unlimited economic growth on a planet with finite natural resources and growing populations of people and livestock is fatally flawed. It's leading to ever-increasing destruction of the natural world. Indeed, we're in the midst of the sixth great extinction. And it is so important to understand that we are part of the natural world and that we depend on it for food, water, air, everything. But we depend on healthy ecosystems. Every ecosystem is made up of a complex mix of interdependent animal and plant species, each one with a role to play. And as more and more species disappear from an ecosystem, it will eventually collapse. And make no mistake, ecosystems are collapsing all over the world. And this is bad for us because it's a scary but true fact that even our own human species is not exempt from extinction. It's also important to understand that we need to spend time in nature. It's been proven that this is highly beneficial for our mental and physical health. It's especially important for young children and for those suffering from anxiety or depression. <laughs> Indeed, in Japan and Canada and maybe other countries, Doctors can actually write out prescriptions for time in nature, and this is for patients with mental health and physical health problems. This is why, of course, urban greening is so important to bring nature into the cities, because so many people will never get out into wild nature. I do believe that we have a window of time when, if we get together, we can at least slow down climate change and loss of species. Hope lies in the fact that we're working on renewable energy, turning towards small-scale family farming, regenerative agriculture and permaculture, moving towards a plant-based diet, planting trees, fighting to save old-growth forests, and to save species from the brink of extinction. We're providing environmental education in more schools, working with local communities around the world to help them find ways of making a livelihood without destroying their environment. And we're creating wildlife corridors so fragmented groups can make contact with each other. We're working to alleviate poverty everywhere and people are beginning to think about their own environmental footprints and understanding that they make an impact trying to make wise choices in how they live. There are people fighting to solve every problem that we've inflicted on our planet. But most important of all is to create a new mindset that gives top priority not to the GDP of a nation, but to the health of its people and of the natural world. In fact, to promote the well-being and happiness of the people. It does seem impossible 
in the fractured world in which we live today because it isn't possible to achieve such a system unless we can curb unsustainable lifestyles, alleviate poverty, racism, discrimination, ignorance, political divisiveness, and war. But it's surely something worth working to achieve in country by country, and surely it's the only way forward in the long run. Many of our young people are eager for change, so let's bring our brilliant minds to work let us collaborate and form partnerships to move ahead. And let us ensure that our heads work in partnership with our hearts, for only then, I believe, can we attain our true human potential. Above all, let us not lose hope. Nature, given time, will return to places we've destroyed. Animals on the brink of extinction have been given another chance. Our intellect is increasingly turning towards creating a better and more sustainable world for all. And the determination and energy of young people when they understand the problems and are empowered to take action certainly inspires and gives me hope. And then there's the indomitable human spirit, the people who tackle what seems impossible never give up, never give up and eventually succeed. That is our hope for the future. Please don't ever give up. Thank you.